First, I want to thank the Roscoe of the Road. I want to thank my new, my new dear friends, Israel and Zatom, and Yeshua, the beautiful, beautiful Achnasat Bachim, to have myself and my friends to be here with you. So thank you for the beautiful invitation. I see that my my two years of Spanish in high school didn't help me at all. And I, I, the only Spanish word that I understood with the most said was the word chizu. <laughs> that was the only word that I understood in Spanish. It was chizu. Chizu, chizu. We were singing a minute ago the words from darkness to light. We're entering into the world right now. We're entering into the world of Hanukkah. We're leaving the world that's called Afela. Darkness. There's been so much darkness this past month. Right after the after the pogrom on October seventh, I spoke to our community, and I mentioned then that in general, whenever the chagim end, it's not a good feeling. Even on a regular year, when everything just returns to normal to the routine. All of us, when it comes to the end of Sukkot it's hard. It's very, very hard. There was a great sadik. It doesn't say in the Surah his name, but it said he was one day talking to the It was a great sadik. But it was the end of Sukkot and And everybody was with a long face already. How are we going to go into the year? How can we leave this time being together with each other with Hashem in such a close way? How can we leave it and go into the winter? So he looked around this Sadiq and he saw it. And then he stood up and he went into the closet in the Beit Knesset and he took out the Hanukkah Menorah from the closet. Even though it was only some at the end of some khatara, he took out the khatara and he put it on the table. And he said, he said, Heaven, close your eyes. Soon it's going to delight the Khan. In our favor of our, our brothers, our sisters, that are in such darkness and has thrown the entire Jewish people into darkness. But because they have we're coming now into the time of Ma'afeva Lora. Hashem is Baruch Shalom. That the Or, which of course the Or of Hanukkah, is already shining Rosh Chodesh. It's beginning to shine now. It's not the Shloshim Yom Kodav HaChakim before, but it's shining already the light of Hanukkah. We have to always begin with the Tfilah, that all those who are the Tzarab Yishiyah, they should be able to grab the Afeilah of Or. And that all of us, because each one of us has you know, our brothers and sisters that are sitting there, Hashem Yachim, in Azam, who knows who's with them. They're not the only hostages in the world. Their, their, their situation is the most terrible. But each one of us, in a certain way, is being held prisoner, is being held hostage. So I want to share with you just something very, very short. That I try to give over to Chagayim because we're in such need of chizuk. There's a story that I've told that happened to me. 
must be ready 42 years, 43 years ago, that I had to make a certain big decision in my life, and there was something that was pulling me in a direction that was not the right direction. And I was, I was torn. At the beginning, I don't, torn. The beginning was torn? Karua. Spanish. I was torn. I couldn't decide what to do. And at that time, the Lubavitch Rebbe, at that time, the Lubavitch Rebbe was alive. And it was impossible to go talk to him. Already for many years, you couldn't go in. You, you couldn't go by yourself. But I felt I am not a lot of about Chassid, but I felt a tremendous, tremendous need to go to somehow maybe I would be able to get a bracha. It was silly because you can't get you couldn't go up to him. So I was talking to some friend of mine that I, that I knew from. Chabad. So I asked him, is there anywhere that I can see the Rebbe? So he was laughing at me by yourself. I said, okay, I know I can see him. So is there anywhere I can, when can I see him? So he said, this is what Seisha said, come tomorrow, Sunday, come Sunday, and the Rebbe is going to finish the Cham exactly, I don't remember, he told me, like 2.23. He'll come walking out from 7.70. He'll come walking out. He's going to the Ohel. You know what the Ohel is, right? He's going to the Ohel, to Daven, the, the big of, of Kvitlach, you know, to go to Daven. And he'll be able to see him. He'll come out from 770. He'll go to the, he'll go to the car. Maybe you could catch his attention. So, okay. I went to, to Crown Heights. And I thought I was pretty lucky because it was around 10 minutes before that time. There were maybe 15 people standing, waiting. So I thought this is pretty good. I'm going to go right up to him. You know? But about five minutes later, all of a sudden, around 1,000 people. I don't know where they came from under the ground, <laughs> from the walls, from the air. There were 1,000, all different kinds of Jews. They came and pushing and shoving out. And, and I was already. Uh, uh, you know, I was already pushed back. I was skinny and a kid, and I was pushed back. But there was a nice big house of the grid that pulled me to the front. And exactly when they said the Rebbe would come out, the Rebbe came out, and everybody was standing on both sides. There were police barriers, and the Rebbe was, came through, and he walked very fast, and he was looking like this at the, he was looking at them, nodding his head, and smiling, and walking straight to the car. So I was there, I was trying to just catch his eyes, forget that bracha, just to get his eyes. You know, he had the most beautiful eyes in the world. Just to catch his eyes. But he passed right by, I went, it didn't work. And I, and I, I just stood there. And, and he went into the car with, with one foot. He was in the car. And then he came out from the car and he walked back right over to me. He walked right up to me, and he just went like this. Like this, he didn't say a word, he smiled, and he went like that. It really is hardly a day that goes by in my life where I want to think of that, but especially when I need chizuk, when I need chizuk, which is like all of us, a lot. But I decided that from that time, I was going to try to spend the rest of my life in my own tiny, tiny, tiny little way to try to give over that wave of the Rebbe's hand to other Jews. I can't do the wave with my hand because I'm a nobody. So I have to try to talk to explain what I mean by that. That chizuk that the tzaddik gave me that I'm giving over to you. So I want to share with you just a few words. What I mean by that, a little bit of chizuk. And why is it that, why is it that we need so much chizuk? Not just because of what's happened, because of the Mulchama, because of the war, 
before the war started, as I said, the hostages, prisoners, even before they were taken to Gaza, we were just talking some of the Chavayim about the story of the lost princess from Rabbi Nachman, the story of the lost princess. Every Jew is a lost princess that's trapped in a palace, that's taken hostage in the palace of Lotov. Lotov. The palace of Melbourne. Every Jew, all of us are lost princesses. All of us are being held hostage. But why? But why? So let's go back for a few minutes to the beginning. At the beginning, at the beginning, it says, Hashem created man in his image. It says, there are many, many different opinions of what that means. What does it mean to be in God's image? What does that mean to celebrate? So Rabbi Sadi Gaon says that the Tamshi Leibel HaSayadecha, that just as Hashem rules over the world, Hashem gave man the ability to rule over this world. It's an Elohim, God's image. The Ramban says Salam Akim means that the person has a koch ha Yitzira means to, to create something, to, not Yeshayayi, but to create something, to make something new in this world. A man has a koch ha Yitzira, that's the Ramban. Look at this for an this one says the image of God Salam Akim, the man has a koch ha only a human being has the unique ability to choose. You and I have free choice. Our lives, it's our choice, what we want to make of our lives. So man is Baal Bukhira. Then the Baal Musa, the Tzadikim, the Baal Musa, especially Rav Desta, as I said, I spoke a lot about this, that the unique quality of Tzadam Akim is the Kach and Nitina. The man has the ability to be kind. To think outside of himself, to do for others, the kachanetina, as the tzaddik can. Each bit midrash. The Rambam, of course, said, "What's the what's the tzaddik looking? What do you think the Rambam would say? What's the image of God, of God in man?" Or the Rambam, you could guess. You have to you have to see it. What does the Rambam say? Is what? No. The kachaseich, man's ability to reason, to think, the intellect. The Rambam. So all the tzaddikim, each one with his own bit madrash, and each one built a world. From that, the kuda of defining man's greatness. But when we learn Gemara, which I'm sure many of you do, or all of you do, when we learn Gemara, you know, there's always a very important question if you learn all different good ideas, and different opinions in halacha, you ask a question, Lamai Nafkimin. Lamai Nafkimin means what practical difference is there between this shita, this view, and that view? Lamai Nafkimin. Why are you saying this? Lamai Nafkimin. In other words, each one of the tzaddikim is saying that there's something great about man. And each tzaddik, each tzaddik spoke about that Nakuda that he saw, which demonstrates the essential quality of man's greatness. That nikuda, apnimit, of man's greatness. But the question is now that man is great, either because of Bechira, Nesira, Nitina, or we didn't even, I didn't even mention what does the Zohar, what does Rabbi Shimon HaKadda, what does Rabbi Shimon HaYechai say, what does the Baal Shem what does the Vilna Gaon say, what's the, what's the greatness of man, what's the Tzalom HaKim, what's the Chelem Gaon Kami Mahamash, the man has a Neshama, that a human being, you and I, are flesh and blood, and each one of us has within us a chelak eloka mimal mamash. Each one of us has a chelak eloka, God Himself inside of us. So man is great. Each one of us is carrying within us elokut mamash. What do I have given? The question is 
So now what? Now that you've heard six or seven or eight different explanations, reasons, a teller of your greatness. So now what? What is it that man can use his greatness for? What's the point of his greatness? So I want to share with you something. I spoke about once by Shabbat Shalom. The holiest time of the year is Ni'ila. Aha, the end of Yom Kippur. Ni'ila. And in Ni'ila we say the words Ata Hevdalta and Nosh Mirosh Ata Kirehu La'amot Lefanach Let me translate if you don't understand. Ata Hevdalta and Nosh Mirosh Hashem, you chose man from the beginning. Knows you made man different, whatever the, in whatever way, from the different ways that I mentioned. You set man aside and you made him great. But what does man use his greatness for? You have recognized man. That a human being, a Jew, has the ability to stand before you. La mod la fanach. La takireu la mod la fanach. You know when man was created, there were angels that did not, that did not want man to be created. There were angels that, knew, that said, Tashem, ma and those the possible that would later on come and tell him, ma and those kittis kirenu vadam kittif kedenu. Ma and those kittis kirenu. Who was man? What is man? We've seen over this past month what a human being can descend to. I grew up in a house, my parents were both survivors from the Holocaust, and I grew up with stories of what happened to my family, of what my parents went through, of what a human being can become, of how low a human being can sink. And it makes no difference how many people in the world are now changing the story and that it never happened and the pictures are now true. And that Jewish babies in 2023 weren't thrown into an oven. So the Malachim had a pretty good time. They had a pretty good question on God's decision or this idea to create this wondrous being that has all these special qualities. And don't think that the Malachim couldn't see any Nazis and they couldn't see Hamas. So they had a complaint. My endless kit is kirel, who had kit if kitan. But the problem is, forget about Hamas, Yimak Shimon. And forget about the Nazis in our Shalom. Our problem is the reason that we need so much physic and the reason that right now Hashem is bringing something upon the world that as much as it's painful and terrible, it's unbelievable. There's such an or there's such a light of coming that's in the world right now. There's such an or there's such a light that's in the world right now. From the beginning of time, This great being that Hashem created has heard a voice in his ear, that voice of the Malach saying, Ma endos kitis kiran, you're worthless. You're worthless. You're nobody. Adam and Chava, when they ate from the tree, Hey, Gerashto Te'ayom, Hashem, you have kicked me out. And I'm running away from you. 
And ever since then, people are wandering around this world. Instead of what? The greatness of man is that he's able to stand and face Hashem. Why did God give us all of these kachot? To be able to face Him. To be able to have a relationship with Him. To be able to think about Him. There are Jews now in the world that for their entire lives they never ever thought about Tila. They never thought about Mizuzot. We're standing from everywhere Mizuzot. See, see. Never thought about Mizuzot. Never thought that Kach Borovu. And all of a sudden there's a certain R in the world that came with this horrible, horrible story. Where for the first time people are stopping and they're looking at Hashem in the eyes. Stop listening to that voice that says, That you and I are Jews. And Hashem gave us the gift of Himself. And that gift of Himself means that He gave us the Koch of Bechira, the Koch of Nitina, the Koch of Yitzira, the Koch of Shlita, the Chelok of Kamima. All of that He gave us in order that we stop running from Him. But that we face him. And that we look him in the eyes. And we have a relationship with him. And we have a relationship with each other. Because since that time that Adam and Chavah ate from the tree, people are hiding from Hashem. And even among religious people, it's an amazing thing. I've seen this so many times. There's a certain place where I was living for a couple of months in Yishlam a few years ago. We went away for a little bit, and I was living there, and there's a beautiful, beautiful, famous shul over there. And whenever it's a mincha aravi, it's an amazing thing. It's like a hundred people stuff into the room. It's a small little shtibel. Ninety percent of the men tried to stay in the women's section. And only a few of the old men dabbled in the front. The rest of them are standing in the back. They tried to know where they could be near the door, you know, with the, the way out. What are they hiding from? Where are they run? So I mentioned this father before. So listen to this guy, and I'll try to end this. I'm sorry, I was late. But listen to this. Moshe Rabbeinu, before we came into Israel, Moshe Rabbeinu, at the beginning of Sefer Darim, Moshe Rabbeinu tells us, describes to us what happened, and why is it that we have a Tisha B'Av? Why are we going to be Tisha B'Av? And it says about Teirag Nebo Aleichem Batomru, Yisinat Hashem Otan, Yisinat Hashem Otan, Otsiyan Yim Yisrael. Listen to this crazy passage. It says in the Torah that the Jewish people, B'nai Yisrael, in their tents, now we have a word that comes from the Yiddish, but you might have heard it over here also. You know what it means, tahak? You have you heard the word tahak? Didn't come here? It means to, to talk about something that's not so good to talk about, and to make it to a big Indian. Okay. So, Moshe Benes says that there was a big hack when the Maratim came back, when the spies came back. But Tehrag, Bo'aleichem, Batomru, Bisinach Hashem Otan. What does that mean? Because Hashem hates us, Hotziyam Yimitzvah. He took us out of Yimitzvah. Bisinach Hashem Otan, Hotziyam Yimitzvah. Because God hates us, He took us out of Yimitzvah. How could that be? How could the Jews have come to that conclusion? Hashem loves them. Hashem, Hashem took them out of Israel with the Ten Makkot. Hashem made Kriyat Yamsuf. Hashem gave them the Torah on Sinai. Hashem the whole, turned the whole world upside down, inside out. Because how much He loves us. So how could they have, how could they have been talking amongst each other? And it doesn't mean just in one tent. It says that they wrapped the Bible and that was the hack the Jews were talking about. The Sinat Hashem Otanu, he hates us. And that's why he took us out of the desert to kill us. How could they have come to such a conclusion? 
So the Svarno says over there a few words. Just a few words. Svarno says, listen to this. Sha'avadnu avadazor b'Mitzrayim. Why does God hate us? Because God knows that when we were in Egypt, we also went to clubs every now and then. We also used to watch Netflix. We also went to Kino. We also went to Shabbat Sadiq when we were in Israel. The Sfarna says, Al Shabbatu, Avadat, Zerat, Mitzrayim. And the conclusion is, Husunayatan. God hates us. Do you have any idea? How many boys I've heard this from, and how many young women I've heard this from over the past 45 years? Beautiful Jewish children, beautiful Jewish children who have done certain things that people who do make mistakes as part of growing up and doing shiva, who make certain mistakes. But they believe is sinat Hashem Otan. Hashem hates me. Why? Shabbat no Rabbi Zabra Israel. Not about the Zabra, don't be doing that anymore. But I, I did less for say Shabbat, I did this. The other day I looked in my eyes at that. Hashem knows that I saw my computer. Hashem knows that I speak like Shamara. So the, you have beautiful Jews, not just kids, adults too. But at some point in life, they begin to think that Hashem doesn't want to have that relationship with them. And that's what the Ramban says over there in Kumash. The Ramban says that when he was running away, it says, the Ramban says, I can't, I can't, I can't pray. The hardest thing is not to learn Torah. Everybody knows what Torah is. You have to be crazy not to love Torah. Torah is the most delicious thing in the world. Uh, to learn a page of Gemara, to learn, to learn a page of Shulchan Aruch, a Rambam, is there anything that's more delicious than learning that? A Chumash, a Rashi, a Rabban. There's nothing more beautiful in the world. Every loves learning Torah when they're exposed to it. But davening is hard, right? Tefillah is very hard. Because Tefillah is, requires in the most obvious way, Tila requires and not to run away from him. You can learn Gemara, by the way, your whole life. You can go to seven Siyam Hashas. You can go to every Siyam Hashas. You can make Siyam on one second of the Masechka, and you can still be hiding from God. You can still be hiding and running away from Hashem. You still don't have a relationship with the Kodesh Baruch. Just the same way that you have many people that are married for 20, 30, 40 years. They raise a family together, but they don't have a relationship with Pani Mel Pani. There's the teaching from the Balatanya in the Kutay Torah, Parashat Nachribad. But there the Balatanya asks a very basic question. He asks, what is the meaning of Tshuva? Not to repent, that's not a Jewish word. Shuva means to return. Ashuva Hashem. Hashivein Hashem Alech and Ashuva. So yes, what's the meaning of Shuva? To return to Hashem. So the Balatani asks a very simple question. What does it mean to return to God? You can't go away from Him. What does it mean to return to Hashem? Late Atar Panui Mine. There is no place without God. Hashem is everywhere. Ain't no Muvada. So what does it mean to return to him? You can't go away from him. He's everywhere. He's here right now. There's no such thing as leaving him. So what does it mean to return to him? So Tanya says that we see in the Zarak Kadosh, in the Sarma Koshin, that there are two times, there are two kinds of relationships. There's a relationship that's called Panim, with Panim or Panim, El Panim. And there's a face to face. And there's a relationship that's called Achor, Bachor, back to back. It's a very deep thing in Kabbalah, I'm not talking about Kabbalah. Panim al Panim or Achor, Bachor. That means that you could be living with your wife for 20, 30, 40 years. You have the same address, you raise the children together. And you're good people, you're kind to each other. 
but it's not the way that it was under the chuppah. Under the chuppah, when you were married, there was panim al panim. There was a relationship of panim al panim. That I can't tell you how many times couples over the years have sat in my office. And I had one a situation like this just a short time ago. The couple sits in the office and and I and, and I'm quiet and they're quiet. And I asked the husband, let's say his name is Yaakov. Yaakov, why are you here? Why did you come to see me? He says, Rabbi, my wife wanted us to come. I said, do you have any idea why Rivka wants you to come? She said, Rabbi, ask Rivka. She's already taking out tissues from the box. <laughs> Not that she's already wiping her. And I put the box to begin with on her side. I know we're ready to keep the box. It doesn't always go this way, just like 90%. <laughs> so she's already with her arms. And then he starts to say, first, before he says everything, he was looking around at this farm that I have, and he said, oh, I didn't know that they put out a little uh, for the kibay. He's already looking around the room to see far, and she's crying. And then I say to him, do you know why your wife is crying? He says something like this. I'm not exaggerating. I don't know why she's so upset. I think that I'm a good father. I take the kids to the every Sunday carpool. You know means carpool? I drive them to school every Sunday. I fix things in the house. Um, I think that I, I, I got my wife an anniversary present. And he's going on with all of his mindless and all of his selling the kid. And he's going on with everything. And she's taking more tissues out. And I said, do you understand why she's crying? And then I'll ask Rivka, why are you crying? And she says, he, he is a good man. He is a good man. And I appreciate the carpool. I appreciate the light bulbs. I appreciate, I appreciate that he makes a good living. He takes care of us. I'm happy that this year he remembered our anniversary. I appreciate all those things. But Rebbe, she says to me, ain't shum dava beneno. Ain't kum, she uses Israeli. Ain't shum dava beneno. Chayva televinim? There's nothing. I didn't get married to, to have someone change light bulbs, although I like the light bulbs being on. Not even for carpool. All of that I appreciate. Avamat kara. What happened to us? What happened to Panim al Panim? Because the Tanya says, Panim al Panim achor b'achor, it's not a matter of distance. You live, in, you live with your wife, but you're a million miles away. And Hashem says the same thing. The Navi Yirmiyah says, the Lush of the, of the Navi is the same thing. Pinitim alay orif, v'lo Panim. You turn your back to me. Not your face. Yes, then you say Hashem, but don't I learn the, didn't I make a Mashas? I don't I didn't learn that from me? You did, I appreciate that. Don't I keep Shabbat? I appreciate you keeping Shabbat. Don't I pronounce still never? I appreciate you putting Don't I didn't I make an Asha Yatza today when I went off the bed? Hashem I appreciate all the things that you're doing that you're supposed to be doing, and I appreciate that. Those are all the jobs, those are all the, the mitzvot, and I appreciate and you're gonna get rewarded for everything you did. I've like, ain't shouldn't have every name. The same way that other Mauritian in Ghana ran away, the same way a person goes to shul and he doesn't want anybody to see that he came 15 minutes late, so he goes to the back of the shul to that one's three minutes, which, and it's good that he goes to shul. It's good. He goes to shul. Hashem says, I gave the Torah, I gave the Torah that we should be able to face each other. So why are you always turning away from me? Even with your mitzvot, you're not facing me. Where's the tefillah b'regash? Where's learning Torah l'shma? Remembering why you're learning Torah. 
who gave you the Torah? Well, like the Baal Shem Kodesh said, that when a Jew speaks words of Torah and Tvilah, Hashem kisses the lips of a Jew when he says words of Torah and Tvilah. Do you ever think of me at all? So Rabbi Yishlam at that point, what we do, to, we say Rabbi Yishlam, ay, 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 ay. Like this guy in my office, because who knows what he's been up to. And a lot of times in conversations with him afterwards, we talk about some of the things that he's been up to. And some of the things that his eyes have seen. And some of the things that he's done. And some of the people he's spoken to that he should never have spoken to. But the same conclusion as the Jewish people in Eglaf Mitzrayim. As Pesinat Hashem Otanu, Hosein Mitzrayim. Asher Adu, Hadazar Mitzrayim. He can't face his wife because of certain things in his life that are not the way they should be. We can't face the Baruch because of certain things in our lives. They're not the way that they should be. But the truth of the matter is, the truth of the matter is, the Baruch Hu wants us to look at him. Something amazing is going on in the world. I don't know, we don't know who these Nishamot are. First of all, we don't know the Nishamot of those who are the Chatufim or Taik and Hashem and all that. They should all be well, they should be free, terrifying. And we don't know these chaylin that are Muslim efforts to protect us. These soldiers, we don't know that they're being killed, that have been killed by Kibbush Hashem, who these Mishamot are, from earlier Gilgulim, why they, who they are. These Jews of Mesirat Nefesh, Ba'ad, Ba'ad Ameyel O'Kain, Ba'ad Ameyel, that they're fighting, they're fighting with such omens, with such courage. We don't know who they are. We don't know who they are. But something's happening, Chavah. Jews are slowly starting to turn their heads around and to look at Hashem everywhere. I've, I've been shown clips of guys, there's a guy with tattoos, I don't know if you saw this, I don't know if these things come to here. Yeah, yeah. Guy with tattoos, like he, the only thing that he has, he, he had even out, uh, uh, over here by his neck. He had tattoos. He has by the place of Tvil. He has tattoos all over. The Kafir Regal Bad Rosh. The tattoos. And he's giving a drush to the whole world saying, until now I didn't think about that I was Jewish. Until now I didn't think about that I was Jewish. This feeling that we have, Panim and Panim, that we're looking at each other again. Yom Kippur, there were Jews in Tel Aviv that were screaming at all the Jews for davening in Yom Kippur. They, were, they, were, they wanted to stop the daven in Yom Kippur. There was such craziness going on, fighting between Jews. The Jews are living in the same country, in the same Dal Amot. Achor Ba'afor. You understand? Achor Ba'afor. Not able to face each other, Panim and Panim. Not able to face each other. Now look what's happening. Our heads are turned around. We're looking at each other again. Eye in the eye. Panim and Panim. We want to see each other. We know that the rest of the world can't trust for anything. I was raised like that. Because of what my parents went through. My children, my grandchildren can't believe what's happened. I'm not surprised at all. I was only waiting until it would happen. I knew it was going to happen. It's a matter of time. But it's not Bissanat Hashem It's Ahavti Yedchem. Ahavti Yedchem. Hashem is saying to us, I miss you so much. I miss you. I want you to come back to me. I want you to look at me again. It's been such a long time. I want you to look at each other again. Every parent, anybody who's a parent here knows, but the biggest nachat ruach that a parent has is when the children love each other. Aha. Even if, the, even if this kid is not so firm, this kid is not, it's, it's hard, it hurts. But if the children are good to each other, uh, Jewish children are starting to behave to each other again in the right, in the right way. They're starting to look at each other. They're starting to do for each other. It's unbelievable. Tani tani. What's going on? Something very big is happening. We have to hold on to not to lose this because 
הנה זה עומד אחר קוטלנו, אצל זה שיר שיר, זה עומד אחר קוטלנו, משיח הסטנדינג, אחר קוטלנו. אני עוד אסלח את הרוע. למי חסר אוזן, הצדיק סד, אחר קוטלנו, הנה זה דבר שאנחנו נבנים בנו 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 So I'm going to tell you a story. Please be welcome if you keep me light. The story probably never happened. I heard this in my daughter's story many years ago. She brought Hashem Zedi telling the story to her children. Maybe the story was like a hundred and something years ago in London. They were having a contest. You know, the English like to consider themselves very, very civilized. You know that. They pride themselves on being very civilized. Some of them are. So they were having a, a contest, <coughs> not football. They were having a contest to recite poetry. And they had different people look at us, and they would, say, they would say over a poem, <coughs> from the English poet, which we usually, we'll see it wasn't only, but English from poets, and they would have to count this, and the winner would get a, a nice prize. And it was a big audience in the auditorium. And it came down to the three final people, and the, and the judge, the judges were there, and they said, okay, This is, the, this is the final poem, the 23rd Psalm. That means, Perek Chav Gimbo, Tehillim Kepit Chav Gimbo. What's that? Miserable of it. Hashem Rari Bar Sat. Hashem is my shepherd, Hashem watches over me. Yam Kelo Kim Salmana, Liyara, Katayim Adi, Katayim Adi. So that was the poem. That was the poem. that the judges gave the three finalists to read, to recite. They had a book in front of them of Psalms, of Taylor. These were not Jewish people. And the three of them recite, and there was this one young guy, and he said it very movingly, very beautifully, and it was clear that he was the winner. And all of a sudden, in the back of the auditorium, there was an Eastern European Jew, and a long coat, a long beard and face, an old man, And he got up and he said, Judges, judges, in a very broken English, Judges, could you let me say, could you let me try? And they thought this would be an entertaining way to end the evening. <laughs> to make fun of a Jew. So they said, sure, sure, Rabbi, come. Everybody was laughing. <coughs> They were all laughing. And the Rabbi came there, this old Jew came to the, the front. And he started to say, miserable about it. He was English, he English, whatever he was saying. So at the beginning people were smiling and they were smirking. By the time he was finished, silence. The people that were, some people were even crying. And that's it, he walked out, everybody walked out. And when he was walking, the winner of the contest, about this prize, award, he ran after the old rabbi and he said, Rabbi, the truth is you deserve the reward, the award. The rabbi said, I wasn't competing. I don't, get, I don't have the award, I don't want the award. And you did a very nice job. The young man said, maybe you could explain to me. Why is it that when I finished reciting the psalm, the 23rd psalm, everybody in the audience was clapping, cheering. But when you finished reciting it, there was silence and tears. Why? So he said, the old man said, you did a nice job. But there's a very big difference between me and you. The difference is, I know the shepherd. I know the shepherd. It's a hava shepherd, it's a hava shepherd. Ki ati imadi, ki ati imadi, ki ata, 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 ata. Ati hivdalte ata shenimah shvataki me yuvah mufana. Chayva, we're going to get through this time together. And we'll be stronger than ever before. I know people talk like that. We were saying, Mom, stronger than ever before. Once we could 
turned to Hashem and to speak to him and say, Ki atta, atta in the day. Yeah, I've made mistakes, Barashon. I've made a lot of mistakes. But I know that you love me and you give me a chance to, to be better and I want to be better. And I'm coming to you. It will do I'm coming to you to try to be better. I'm coming to you. I want to outtask the panach. Now I'm begging Hashem, don't turn your eyes away from me. That's our tefillah now. Hashem, our eyes are turning towards you. Al Now that we finally are turning towards you, please, please Hashem, don't turn your eyes away from us. We want, we want to be with you. We want it to be good. We want to be back together with you. The way it's supposed to be chetan kala, the way that it was on the chupah. We should be zoh bezat Hashem to see Yeshua Yisrael. To be able to see Bezat Hashem, to see Kaim, Ayim, Yiru, Bishu Hashem, see on the Lashon Hill, and we take them every